the Chief People Officer at DaVita, a Fortune 500 publicly traded healthcare company, and very proud to say a World Blue Certified Freedom Center organization since 2008. And we've only been certifying companies since 2007, so for the last 13 years. And DaVita has maintained, as a very large company, this rigorous standard. So major props to DaVita. As the Chief People Officer, Kenny oversees the entire human resource function, taking care of 65,000 teammates, that's what they call their employees, teammates, around the world. He has been with DaVita for nearly a decade and most recently served the company as a group vice president. Prior to joining DaVita, Kenny previously worked as an investment banker at Morgan Stanley, focused on mergers and acquisitions. So Kenny, it's great to see you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Um, good afternoon, everyone on the, on the call today. Good afternoon, especially to all of our DaVita teammates. Uh, but as Tracy said, I'm the chief people officer uh, for DaVita. I have uh, 20 or 25 minutes today to talk to you about um, what, what we call community first. And, you know, community first and the word community is a really a sort of age old idea. But I want to talk about how in DaVita, which is a relatively large organization, how we keep that idea fresh in an evolving world that's changing really rapidly and especially in a year like 2020. Um, just a quick statement on community is a prominent element of our culture and who we are. And so it's not, uh, it's not a word that I use uh, in, any, in any sort of uh, superficial way. If you were to go talk to those 65,000 teammates that Tracy pointed out, almost all of them, if you talk to them for more than two minutes about DeVita, will use the word community. Uh, and so it is something that we take quite serious. We hold ourselves to that standard. And I wanna share today, we don't have it perfect, but I wanna share today some of the things that we do to try to make it come to life. So let me just start a little bit about myself in true DeVita fashion. We like to uh, introduce ourselves when we're talking to friends. And so uh, what you see up on the screen is just a quick visual of who I am. And if you were to go left to right, what I would say, anytime people ask me, you know, who, what's the essence of kind of who you are, it's that I'm a family man. And so that picture you see on the left is my wife, Alexandra, my son, Grayson. Uh, this is us in Grand Teton National Park last year. Uh, when, when vacations were a thing that were more prominent and easy to do and we were enjoying ourselves uh, in a summer in the mountains. Uh, and that family and that, that, that small group is kind of what keeps me going. Uh, in the middle, the middle represents uh, my career. My career has actually been sort of a, uh, a, a weaving together of various interests. And so I would say by nature, I'm an extremely curious person. Uh, most of my career was spent in finance. Uh, you know, I studied business in undergrad, uh, worked as a banker, went to business school, worked on the street. And then I came to DaVita and really what drew me to DaVita was a passion for people and teams. And my journey in DaVita has been a beautiful one. I've loved every moment here. Uh, and as was said in the beginning, I am now the chief people officer for DaVita. Uh, and this is my first HR job. And so my first HR job is, is a big HR job, but I'm excited to lead the way uh, in helping to put together programs, uh, to attract talent, uh, and to, to really create wonderful experiences for our many teammates uh, across our village, which is what we call ourselves. And to the right, uh, it's just a little bit about uh, geography. So I am from Miami. I just moved from Miami to Colorado. Uh, so I'm new to the Mile High City. I'm enjoying it. Uh, my family and I are having fun getting out to the many, many beautiful green parks, getting out to the mountains a bit. Uh, and we look forward to calling Denver home here for the next few years. And um, just a little bit on DaVita, just so everyone has a sense of who we are. We, we like to say we give life. Uh, we take care of dialysis patients, which are patients who are suffering from something called end-stage renal disease, which means their kidneys are no longer working. Your kidney is a small but very vital organ. And we take pride in uh, really sustaining and maintaining life for uh, some of US healthcare's most vulnerable patients. And we do it uh, with love in our hearts uh, and intensity uh, in our hands and our minds. And so uh, just in terms of scale and size, we treat nearly 200,000 patients in the US. 
uh, and about 30,000 internationally. So pretty big scope. Uh, we have about 55,000 teammates in the US and 10,000 internationally. And so we are a big, broad and very diverse village. Uh, but I talk about those numbers, not, not to really pat ourselves on the back or brag. It's really to point out the fact that we are a caregiving organization. In fact, we're probably one of the largest uh, healthcare services organizations in the country. And so we are at our core, a people driven organization. And so uh, it makes this idea of community that much more substantial when you think about it in that context. And then uh, Tracy shared that uh, we've had, we've enjoyed a partnership, a really long partnership with World Blue. Uh, we take great, great pride in our certification uh, and being recognized by uh, such a prestigious organization. And what I thought I would do today, this is the essence of the presentation that I'm gonna give, is to talk about uh, three elements in DeVita that we think a lot about. Uh, we like to say in DeVita, uh, if you take what you believe and how you behave, it nets out to results, right? So we always say beliefs plus behaviors equals results. And I thought it was fun to think about that in the context of World Blues Framework uh, for, for leading in a, uh, in a freedom giving way in a democratic way in a large organization. Um, and so as I talk about beliefs, I like to equate that uh, with the World Blue Framework of mindset. Uh, we'll talk about how we behave, which will give you a sense of how we lead. Uh, and then we get when we get into the results, you'll see we, um, we are a large organization, so we like to measure things. We think a lot about uh, driving for results, and you'll see um, how we think about results as it relates to this uh, notion of community. And so let me, let me start with beliefs and give you a sense of the, the underlying beliefs that drive who we are in this, this notion of community. Uh, and I, I want to make three points on this page. Uh, we believe in a handful of things as it relates uh, to our community. Number one, uh, is the notion of community. We call ourselves a village uh, because we say we're a community first and a company second. And so that doesn't mean that we're not a capitalistic organization uh, looking to drive uh, results for our shareholders um, and, 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 and to, to have, perform on a clinical uh, basis. But at the end of the day, we try to show up and treat each other like a community. Um, and we don't think those things actually work against each other. If you were to think about a community and just uh, take that metaphor out and extrapolate. Uh, in any community, they have, a, they have to have a healthy economy. You know, if you're going to have roads and schools uh, and, and social services, you need a healthy economy. And that's really no different um, in our village. And so that's a, that is a major belief. That's a theme of what I want to talk about today. Um, within the context of that community, we, we use a term called one for all. Uh, and one for all for us is really not a motto. Uh, if you're with someone like me who's been here for a really long time, you start to think about one for all as a way of life. Uh, and one for all means that we, uh, the, the, the greater good is always going to come uh, to, the, to the rescue of the individual. And so we don't think about our people as widgets. We think about individual names and faces. When I think about my 10 years here, what I see in my mind, I see individual nurses and PCTs and directors and vice presidents that I've worked with along the way. And that's the essence for one for all. Uh, when, when someone's in trouble, when someone's hurt, when things happen, uh, we come to each other's aids. And I'll, I'll, tell us, I'll tell some stories to demonstrate that. Um, and then to the far left, you see our mission and our core values. Uh, and no, again, those are things that we don't think about superficially. These things show up, for example, in performance reviews. We talk about them. We grade ourselves as a larger organization. And we really try to hold ourselves accountable to these. You know, when people are rewarded or receive any kind of awards at DeVita, they receive what we call core value awards uh, because we really try to enforce these behaviors. And these, these, these things make up really the essence of our belief. Uh, one quick story I'll tell you is uh, we like to use a metaphor of a bridge here. And, you know, when I came here 10 years ago, DeVita has a very unique culture and it took me a while uh, to really get to the other side and take it in and, and, and be someone uh, that actually believed in it. And yeah, I'll never forget the first time I went to what we call Village Wide, uh, which is our annual celebration where we bring all our managers and many teammates together to talk about goals and, and progress. Uh, we have a bridge and what the bridge represents uh, is, is sort of a intellectual uh, and spiritual uh, crossing over to the other side uh, to embrace these beliefs. 
And the first time I saw that bridge, someone was like, hey, you want to take a picture on the bridge? You want to cross it? I said, no, uh, because uh, if anyone, anyone who knows me really well will tell you, I, uh, I try to behave with, with a high degree of integrity and sincerity. And I wasn't ready to embrace it. And I got to say, the village was patient with me and allowed me to do it on my own terms. Because when teammates ask me about, hey, these beliefs that Davida has, this notion of community, this notion of village, is it real? I always emphatically say yes, because I believe it. And the people that I work with believe it. And I know many leaders here who do believe it and who have crossed that bridge. And so, so hopefully that gives you a sense of kind of the foundation that begins to build uh, how we think about community and try to define it. And then I would, I would quickly transition to behaviors, which is the second part of the, the formula that I'm putting together here. And when we think about behaviors, I want to call out three things uh, that are meaningful to DeVita that hopefully will resonate. Uh, number one, we have something called the DeVita way, which is this symbol you see on the left. And it, what, we, what we say when we talk about the DeVita way is that we use our head, heart, and hands uh, to care for each other with the same intensity that we care for patients. That's a pretty high bar, right? And so it means that you take and you bring your talents to the party to care for one another, right? And if you think about it, that is, that is how that one for all comes together. It's, it's people bringing their heads, hearts, and hands uh, to the party to care for each other, whether that's in the pursuit of patient care and the pursuit of our goals or in uh, the pursuit of caring for each other. And that happens in, in many, many beautiful ways. Uh, and so I would say in general, uh, that is a guiding principle for how the average leader at DeVita tries to lead is being balanced across head, heart, hands. We don't think it's sufficient to show up uh, what one of the three, but we aspire to use all three of those uh, because we think they're all important and play a role in helping to bring this community concept to life in our village. Uh, the other thing that we try to do, which I really think hits at the core of World Blue and what World Blue stands for, is we try to be very transparent. Uh, and so although we have a range of roles from patient care technicians to registered nurses to directors and business people and senior leaders like myself, uh, in every forum that you see uh, a handful of teammates and a senior leader, we're going to do something called a town hall. And when we do those town halls, we allow teammates to express their minds, to give us idea, to give us feedback. We ask for that feedback frequently. You know, if you're on a DeVita call, you're going to hear us say, what can we do better? Where are we coming up short? Um, we're going to follow up. If teammates ask us questions and we don't know the answer, we're going to follow up and we hold ourselves accountable to that. Uh, I, I embrace the transparency because, number one, I think it creates an environment for us that we get to the sources of truth faster. Um, the thing that you would always be fascinated about in DeVita, we have these huge meetings, our village-wide, 5,000 people, and you will see an FA or a patient care technician stand up grab a microphone and ask our CEO or ask myself, ask the COO very hard questions because it is our culture. And I always smile. I find myself smiling every time we get into the town hall uh, because I just appreciate being in the kind of environment where we don't think about title. Uh, we, we all, that's, the, that's sort of that essence of that one for all. We're all striving for the same goal. We all know that we have a different role to play in that pursuit. And that transparency really helps us out. An example of that in real life has been in COVID-19. In COVID-19, we did something called uh, the Voice of the Village Call, which is an open forum call for all teammates in the organization to join. We were doing those three times per week when COVID started. And we were getting everyone on the phone. We were getting an average attendance of five to 6,000 teammates. And whether it was our chief medical officer or myself, our CEO, um, we stood tall hall, as tall as we could. At times with COVID, we felt overwhelmed, but we would answer questions. If we didn't know the answer, we got back to teammates. When teammates gave us advice about what to do better, we followed up and tried to improve. And so that transparency is a huge part uh, of what makes uh, DeVita feel like a, a democratic environment. And then the last thing I would point to is, again, we try to keep it flat. I mean, although we have titles, you almost would never see org charts in DeVita. Um, there, I've been here for 10 years. I still haven't, I still don't quite understand the total org chart. We don't really operate that way. We really try to downplay the notion of org charts. We try to downplay the notion of titles. 
what you see here is a picture of something called a shining star lunch. Uh, and that shining star lunch, we invite patient care technicians, dietitians, administrative assistants to our village wide meeting and we honor them. We honor them for being examples of our core values. What you see in that picture is our CEO serving lunch uh, to those teammates, giving them awards, listening to them, sitting with them. Um, and it's, it's one of my most favorite traditions that we have in this organization because it symbolizes um, this pursuit of being non-hierarchical uh, and keeping this village flat. One story I wanna share um, just to bring this all together is I, I was a group vice president, so I was someone that ran our business in the Southeast. And so I, I worked in Florida. And so obviously I dealt with a lot of natural disasters. Uh, one in particular was Hurricane Michael, which happened um, three or four years ago and really devastated uh, the Panama City area. And it was just, you know, in the midst of that trouble and that tough time, it was just beautiful to see our village come together uh, and our community spring to life. I mean, you would be, you would honestly have tears in your eyes. I mean, I gotta tell you, I, I hit the ground. I got to Panama City, I was in clinics. We would do those town halls. And what I saw was teammates from Seattle, teammates from North Carolina, teammates from LA who had come to Panama City. They were in their free time going out to other teammates' houses who had to do patient care to put tarps on their roof. You know, I had a nurse who was crying because she said, me and my 80 year old father, we didn't know how to do the tarp. But this person from Seattle, who was a DeVita teammate, came here and put our tarp up. And we didn't know what we were going to do if they wouldn't have been here. And that's an example of when our village comes to life. And it comes to life like that often. And so um, I, I, I use that story because it's a really good example in a trying time of how that community lives. It lives in big ways like that, but it lives also in a lot of small ways. Uh, and that's something that um, I value personally. And it's one of the reasons why I've been here for close to 10 years is because of that strong sense of community. Uh, and hopefully that, that resonates. So I wanna jump to talking about results because we are a large organization. Um, we do care about this stuff. We take it very seriously. I wanna just share this metaphor with everyone that we talk about amongst our senior leadership team. We like to focus on something that we call air and water. And the way I would set that up is if I was to ask any of you, what would you prefer, air or water? You, you, you'd be fabric, you, 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 uh, you'd probably stumble for a second and not know exactly how to answer because it's really a false question. You, you really can't have a preference between air and water. You need them both to live. And that's the way we like to talk about the Vita, which is we need both. We need both this sense of community and we, we refuse to concede our aspiration for the Vita to feel like a community while pursuing our business and clinical goals. We will never think about those as mutually exclusive. We will never concede that point. We'll never concede that fact. We will continue to, to go after our capitalistic goals of growing our stock, growing our business, um, performing well, being a leader clinically, but the how of how we do it will never change. We will always push ourselves to be a community while not perfect. You know, not every single place in DeVita is a community. You know, you get bad leadership, you get tough times, you get challenged. You know, not everything that we're trying to do gets executed in every single center, but we'll never give up on that pursuit. And what I always like to tell leaders who are coming to DeVita, what makes us different is like a lot of other, or other organizations, we do strive to get results, but it's the how that will matter just as much as those results you get. You can't just get results by any means we expect our leaders to create community and that's a big part of who we are. And so we measure components of this community and it's just two, I will point out, um, we are heavy users of engagement scoring. We, we, we measure ourselves quarterly. Uh, every teammate, we get almost a 90% participation rate and we've held steady for a really long time with a very high percentage of our teammates being highly engaged. That's something we take pride in you know, within that context, you know, we have a bell curve, uh, we have outliers we have to follow up on, but we track that and we, we pay very close attention. Literally, the way this engagement score is cascade, we start with our CEO and COO and give them a view of the organization. We start with our most senior leaders and we cascade it down. And we, we push teams and we push leaders to make commitments, to fix things when they see them, to keep this idea of community fresh and to go at it rigorously like, a, like, a, uh, like we go after other results in our business. 
Um, and then a new thing for us, which I think is actually very topical given, given the environment we, in, we are in, is this pursuit of belonging. When we talk about diversity, we don't use the word diversity and inclusion. We use the, the term diversity and belonging. Um, because in the notion of a community, we, we think the word belo belonging is more meaningful um, and is a higher bar. And if you're a part of a community, you want to feel like you're a belong, not like you're an outsider. You know, not like you've been invited to the party, which is a quote unquote inclu inclusiveness. We want you to belong. We want you to feel like you're a part of something that you've been accepted. And so we measure belonging as well. Um, and we, uh, we track very closely uh, and trend over time uh, the percentage of our teammates that say that they belong in their center uh, because that's really important. And the community is only as strong as each micro community that we have. So hopefully that's been helpful uh, to think about uh, the framework we use to try to drive towards community, uh, our beliefs. You know, we talked about community, one for all, our core values, how we behave, which is the DaVita way, the head, heart, and hands. Um, we try to be transparent. Uh, we try to keep it flat. Uh, and we drive for results. We take it seriously. I use that notion of air and water. We care just as much about how things are done, the preservation of that community, the quality of that community, as we do about our business and clinical results. And, and so I, I want to just use this, I wanted to end on this, this picture. Um, you know, we're not perfect. We're not a perfect organization. Uh, as the world change, changes, that this idea of community becomes more and more challenging with the level of diversity, uh, with the, the problems of the outside world, which clearly creep into uh, our clinics, into the real environment. Uh, it's not easy to keep the fabric of a community together but what I will say is on average, what you experience in a DaVita community is really quite beautiful. I mean, we have people of different races, backgrounds, ethnicities, orientations, ages, et cetera, that come together to care for patients. This picture is a perfect example. I mean, if you look at this picture, this is a real team. This is a real team that I used to lead in South Florida. And you just can look at the faces and you can see what I'm talking about, the diversity of of background and, 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 and age and ethnicity, gender, et cetera. Uh, and they're all, what I love about this picture, they're all in a clinic. Because at the end of the day, that's what matters to us. That's the point of our community uh, is to work together, regardless of our background, regardless of our title, to care for patients. In this, in this picture, there's vice presidents, there's directors, there's managers, uh, there's frontline teammates, but we all try to lock arms and do it together. So with that, that is the end of my presentation. You see my reflection question up on the screen and I will open it up now for Q&A. And hopefully I was on time. Oh, you rocked it, Kenny. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> that was so awesome. And while our questions are coming in, I have to have a little uh, trip down memory lane with you because, you know, working with Davida now for almost 13 years, you you get really invested emotionally in great companies like DaVita. And Miranda and I have had the opportunity to go to several of your village-wide events. We've been there. And I think Miranda remembers meeting you at one of them. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. But I mean, it just, it blows your mind, the level of integrity, the DaVita way, the energy at these village-wide events that bring everyone together it's really had an impact on, on me and my thinking. And you talked about the bridge. And I remember going to one of the village wides and seeing the bridge the, in the, the symbology of that bridge on the stage. And I was talking with Javier, who's now your CEO about it. And I was like, can I walk across the bridge? You know, with that bridge being that symbol, like you said, of making, you know, making that transition, making that choice to operate as a community first. And he was like, yeah. And I, I walked across the bridge and I feel a little emotional even telling this story. I got <laughs> emotional on that bridge Woo! because of what it symbolizes and the stand uh, that you're taking. And it's getting a little emotional just telling you the story, but just how important that is and how important those symbols are. And it has been such a joy and privilege to learn from and work with the, the Vita community. And like you said, nobody's perfect. You're a huge organization, but like you said, that constant striving, the constant commitment towards that higher way, the DeVita way, 
is remarkable. And some of you may not know this, but uh, we give out almost every year a Lifetime Achievement Award in Freedom at Work. And back in 2013, we gave the award to KT, who is your, your visionary CEO, who's now chair. And uh, I, you know, we announced to KT that he would be getting the Lifetime Achievement Award for your work at DeVita. And he absolutely refused to accept this award for himself. It had to be on behalf of the entire DeVita village. And I had the complete honor to come and present it at one of your village-wide events. Uh, and, uh, and then Javier came. We did a summit with you all back in Denver in 2013. And Javier came and accepted the award on behalf of everyone. So there's so many stories I could tell. I love you guys so much. I know we got some, some questions coming in. So Deanna, let's see, lady. Are you, are you ready to go? I know you've been busy. You ready with some I questions am. or comments? Yeah, go right ahead. Absolutely. Thank you, Kenny, for your wonderful talk. Um, we do have a couple of questions. Um, what, this one is from John. How would you advise anyone who may struggle with radical shifts in cultures when they move from company or job to the next, especially if doing so is paramount to job survival? Yeah, I think that's a really good question. Um, you know, uh, the advice that I try to give people, I spend a lot of time talking to MBAs and you know, that group usually has a lot of job fluidity and a lot of choices. And what I always say to them, is number one, you gotta know what you value most. And so you gotta get your personal scorecard right first. And it sounds like from what, I, what I'm get picking up from your question is that you value culture and people. And so I would always say, even before you get there, you gotta do your homework. You gotta feel the people out. You gotta invest time, ask the right questions, be transparent. You know, when I came here, I was really worried about going from investment banking to something like this. You know, I didn't, I didn't think it would fit me, so I asked, really tough questions because I'm like, look, I want them to weed me out. <laughs> if the questions I'm asking or the way I come off, if it turns people off, then I don't want to be here um, because I could tell that which the intensity that this culture was lived and I didn't want to do it half ass. And so I would, I would just always encourage that on the front end. And then I would say, you know, if you get there, like every organization is different. You know, when I, I was transparent when I did this talk, when I, when I came to DeVita, the first three months, I didn't know, if what was being said was real. Um, and because I, my leadership brand, I would say is very much rooted in sincerity and honesty. Uh, I didn't walk across that bridge. I was like, look, I'm not going to walk across that bridge until I believe that these principles, this notion of communities, core values are being lived with real intensity um, and authenticity from uh, the folks who are calling the shots. And I learned that over time, you know, and I would say, I guess the last point that I would give is, you know, um, you have to embrace a culture in your own way. And so hopefully you go to an organization that the application of that culture um, can be done in a way that's comfortable to you. You know, the, the, DeVita has a very unique culture. Uh, Kent was a very dynamic CEO. Um, Javier is just as dynamic, but they're not the same. And I'm not the same as them. Uh, and so I would just, I would encourage you to try to find a culture where uh, you can believe in the same things at the root level but hopefully you have enough freedom and independence to be yourself. That's awesome. That is such a great answer. <laughs> Deanna, you. I think we got another question. Yes, we've got a couple more actually. Um, James asks, what is your biggest challenge when building community and belonging? Yeah, I would say more now more than ever, it's, it's there because there's really no separation between the quote unquote real world and work. Um, I think that's a false, that's just a false framework. It doesn't exist anymore. This concept of, you know, people showing up, you know, putting on their work armor and going to work and blocking out the world. It doesn't, that's not my experience of the world anymore. Uh, people uh, express them full selves vehemently at work. The last two weeks at DeVita have been, um, two of the most challenging and emotional weeks that I've ever experienced, you know, with all the, all that's been happening with the conversation around race and, and policing and all the different things that the, that the world has been talking about have been in our centers, you know, and you can imagine, uh, look, we're an organization that's 58% ethnic, ethnically diverse. Most of our leaders are women, uh, but we serve communities all across the country 
from small towns like Aiken, South Carolina to big cities like Oakland. Um, and so we deal with what shows up in those communities. And so, I, you know, I think what you find is you have to get, you have to get people believing in a shared idea. You know, Javier and I wrote a statement um, to address the last two weeks and we titled the statement one for all because our belief was embedded in one for all is this pursuit of a higher appeal by a diverse group of people. I mean, that's what we do at DeVito. We have, uh, you know, black teammates, white teammates, Hispanic teammates, older, younger, all sorts of sexual orientations, ages, backgrounds. Um, and in COVID, we all had to come together and take care of patients in spite of an existential threat. And we've done that. And we wanted to remind our teams um, of that notion. And so, you know, that's, that's why I feel a lot of energy is I, I just stopped thinking about the world being on the outside and work being work. I don't think that's true. That's our biggest challenge. I would say, I would argue that's any organization's biggest challenge, whether it's social media, things like we faced the last few weeks, um, you know, people wanted to express ideas of corporate social responsibility. I, I would argue that organizations um, now and certainly in the future will have to embrace that, know when to take stances, know how to bring people together and create a safe place that people can have those conversations that sometimes can be difficult. So hopefully that's helpful. That's very helpful. Thank you. I think we've got another question, Deanna Sue. Well, I think that actually kind of, um, you, you just addressed another question I was going to ask, uh, because I know that we had talked earlier, I don't know if you were on earlier, but uh, John Engel asked a question and, and Melanie is also asking the same question, how is DeVita responding internally and externally to the social injustice issues that are front of mind these days, especially in the US? Yeah, I, I'll just build on it. I mean, for us, um, we've, acknowledged, we've acknowledged the pain that a lot of people feel. Um, so that would be number one. And, and so we've um, been explicit about saying how horrified we've been by the killing of George Floyd and other African Americans um, in the last few weeks, which has been tough to see. I think a lot of us have felt that pain, uh, regardless of race or background. And so we've acknowledged that. Um, and what we try to do is just reaffirm what we stand for. Um, because in spite of those black clouds and some of those injustices existing in our broader society. I think what we've, as a leadership team, when I say leadership team, I don't just mean the senior leaders. I mean, we have a lot of leaders in DeVita. Um, I think where we hold out hope and we have optimism is that we have this beautiful canvas of this community and this village that in many ways is different. You know, I just talked about um, the fact that we, we do have a bunch of teammates who are all very different in different communities doing the same thing together. Um, locking arms to care for patients and care for each other. And so we try to reaffirm that notion, which is um, we do believe in one for all. We do believe in um, equality. Uh, we do believe that Black Lives Matter. Um, we, we, and, and we believe that our village can be different and that people can feel like they belong in a meaningful way. And then lastly, what we've been trying to do is get ourselves organized around how we can take action uh, to impact the lives of uh, our black teammates and people of color in general. And so uh, we've committed to um, investing $3 million over the next three years. We're gonna put that to work um, in a number of ways, but we're gonna, in World Blue, hopefully you'll appreciate this. We're gonna do it in a democratic way. And so we got asked by our teammates, um, how come there was no specifics to $3 million? And we said, that was intentional because um, that money will be spent in a way that's reflective of the voices of our people. And so we're gonna be surveying our teammates to understand where they have the most passion to try to make a difference. And we will try to collectively move as an organization towards that. Outstanding, 